My name is Reza. I'm an Afghan journalist and one of thousands of refugees locked down in Europe's migrant camps. I saw many people who are worried and they are terrified. They don't know what to do, what not to do. For two months, I have been investigating camp conditions, aware fear of the virus spread like wildfire. Most of the people are afraid too much, too much. Social distancing and regular hand washing are difficult here. Drinking water and food in short supply and seeing a doctor can be a daily struggle. It's heartbreaking, Reza. It's, it's difficult, it's heartbreaking. Some of Europe's most desperate at the height of the coronavirus pandemic. I don't know what's going on here, and I'm so worried about that. Around 2,000 people are living here, and we have lots of children, lots of children. This is my home, Malakasa Camp, near Athens. I fled Afghanistan and the TV station I worked for five years ago after receiving death threats. My family and I were finally granted refugee status last year. Do you know coronavirus? Yeah. Very bad. Do you wash your hand? Yeah. Greece is one of the first countries in Europe to close its public spaces and restrict crowds. Cleanun. Ola ta eborika kedra. Ola ta cafe, bar ke cafeterias. I bibliothekes, ta musia ke archeologiki hori. Ten days later, the country is in full lockdown. So are the camps. The Greek government, supported by the European Union and the United Nations, is responsible for them. I live in a prefab where we can cook and wash. We also get a small daily living allowance on a cash card. Others are much worse off. <laughs> Hundreds who arrived recently and don't have permission to stay in the camp live in tents. Families living squashed together, ideal conditions for a virus to spread. Look, there's no social distance here. What can they do? What can they do? Nothing. In another part of the camp, I find a small group of families in an even more desperate situation. The tents are wet and these innocent children are like this. I don't know. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For most refugees and migrants heading to Europe, Greece is where they arrive. There are around 60,000 held in 37 camps while their immigration status is processed. 45% of recent arrivals are from Afghanistan. At the end of March, the first coronavirus case in the camps is confirmed here in Arizona. Hi, it's Hussein. Arizona camp, uh, close to Athena. Fellow Afghan Hussein lives there and sends me reports on his mobile phone. Informed us that one African woman got the coronavirus in the hospital. Testing reveals 23 more cases. And after that, they 
quarantine all of the camp, all of the camp. When cases are confirmed, camps go from lockdown to full quarantine. No one comes in or out unless there is an emergency. Fear of the virus and being locked in with it means some people ignore the order not to leave. First day in quarantine, some refugees uh, escape from the camp and they call the police and police rest of them. And I don't know where are they now. Most of the people are afraid too much, too much. No gloves, no mask. I think you can see that my mask, my face that, because we don't have Five days later, coronavirus arrives in the camp where I live, Malakasa. We too are put in total quarantine. The camp is in quarantine for 14 days. No one is allowed to go out and no one is allowed to come in. They say that we will provide you food and medicine. The coronavirus is inside Malakasa camp. Oh my God. A 53 year old man has tested positive. Police are now at the gate. Yeah, how are you? No, no, it is me. That's the voice of a local police officer you can hear. Okay, you keep the measures. Yeah, yeah, okay, two meters. Measures, okay. Yeah. It's very important. It is. The next 14 days is very crucial. Yeah. For all of us. Yeah. The man who tested positive is now in hospital, being treated for COVID-19. How did you understand there is an infected he, person? He went alone to the hospital. They take him inside and uh, they find out uh, with a test that he is... Uh, 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 this is the camp medical center. For the next 14 days, please stay in your houses. Please keep the social distance and only you can come to the clinic when you have a serious issue. The man with COVID-19, Mr. Alemi, was unwell when he went to the medical center. I speak to him from his hospital bed. I felt really hopeless. It was sad. There were times I saw myself close to death. He says the medical center didn't help, so his son pleaded with the police to call an ambulance to take him to hospital. I knew my situation and also that they will not care about me. If I don't save myself, I will die. This is Europe's biggest camp, Moria, a refugee and migrant reception center on the island of Lesbos. Built to house up to 3,000 people. Around 20,000 are now crammed in here. 3,000 arrived this year. Two students with an organization called Refocus Media Labs also send me reports. My name is Mila. I'm from Afghanistan. People here are frightened. Coronavirus is treat for refugees. I am Masil. I am living in Moria. I want to show you the situation in Moria, who are danger for the coronavirus. This is Dr. Zlain, who a person are very close together. And some people has a one meter distance, some people doesn't have any distance. There are no confirmed cases of coronavirus, but people with coughs and fever are worried. Chance of injury. Several NGOs have doctors here, but say more are needed, and they are called for the camp to be closed. It's heartbreaking, Riza. It's, it's difficult, it's heartbreaking. I fear the worst if there would be an outbreak of corona in Moria. Moria is the biggest refugee camp in Europe, which means that it is a European responsibility. I cannot ask people to stay home when there's no home. 
when in a tent of the less than three square meters there are six to seven people. I cannot ask people to wash their hands when there is one water point for 1,300 people. And I cannot ask people to isolate themselves or call a doctor when there is no doctor. The EU says it's provided two and a half billion euros since 2015 and has made 700 million more available since March to help Greece improve conditions and medical care. And that 1,000 vulnerable people were relocated last month with plans to move more. Those white tent, no one is allowed to go there. Migrants who crossed to Greece via Turkey in March are put into quarantine in a new camp close to mine in Malakasa. It's impossible for me to film inside. This is Masoud. He is from Iran. He is filming for me. And one of the biggest problems that we have been in this place is that we don't know what we're going to do. There's no medical facilities inside, so people have to shout for help. One night, Masoud sees a man collapsed on the ground. He says an ambulance is only allowed in when the police agree. The man has a fever, but doesn't have the virus. Masoud tells me later that restrictions have been relaxed here. In my camp, there's a protest at the gate. The families living in tents are running out of food. The people are so angry, they are asking for food. Gate is closed. It is the second day. They did not have any kind of food, any food. They have nothing for eat. The UN is now supplying food to Malakasa, but today nothing's coming in. Because I speak English, the crowd asked me to talk to the police. They are asking about the food. Okay, if not tomorrow, in two days, they will uh, give you food. Believe me, there are many tents here. It is the second day that they do not have a food. And I will give you a, a, an answer, let's say in one hour. One hour. Yeah. Please tell them to go inside. It's not good. It's, it's very cold there, right? A few hours later, I'm back at the gate and told there will be a food, but not yet. Please, don't tell them, don't, don't make problems. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult. I hope they do something because the situation is really, really tough and difficult. Two days later, the UN delivers food. But overnight, there's trouble. Because of quarantine, those of us with cash cards can no longer get money in town to buy food and supplies. It was a shop here and who was selling something to the people. And I heard, I'm not sure, I heard that because he didn't give the people something that they could pay them later and they fire it things get worse when quarantine is extended i get a phone call there's another protest at the gate <laughs> They're telling me a shopkeeper's been beaten by the police for sneaking out of the camp. I'm handed a phone. He says he broke quarantine, so he could get cash for himself and others to buy supplies. 
say that suddenly the, the police without uniform came to me and uh, now the real police is coming at him. And told the shopkeeper wants to go to hospital, but the police sent him back to camp. The Greek government denies allegations of police brutality. It says migrants break in quarantine or return to camp. In Moria, Europe's biggest camp, life was already tough. Coronavirus lockdown has made it worse. There are long queues for food and water. From my camp, I speak to the Greek migration minister. I accept that we have more people than we can cater for in the islands. We have had more arrivals than we were able to provide for. But we have managed. There is food given every day and there is water in all the camps in the islands. In the camps on the mainland, people receive a cash subsidy which allows them to, to go for shopping. But in the, in the few uh, sites that we had to quarantine, we provided adequate food. Fear of the deadly virus and anger at camp conditions are beginning to boil over. I'm told a 16-year-old called Amanullah has been killed in a row outside a shop in Muria. I got home and then someone told me my son was stabbed with a knife. Everyone here knows he was not a troublemaker because he was a very good boy. His father, Mr. Muradi, says Amanullah was stabbed when he asked to buy a lighter and pay later because he didn't have any money. People didn't come here to fight every day. They came because this is Europe and they want to be safe here. Back in Malakasa, I'm told by the charity, Doctors Without Borders, there are now 10 new confirmed cases here. <laughs> Mr. Karimi has just tested positive, but he doesn't believe it. <laughs> Together with his family and friends, he's told to quarantine in this disused school room. The problem for this family is that there is no toilet inside, there is no kitchen inside. And there is no, I think, electricity inside, and I don't know how they can provide their food in the daily food. With no taps or shower inside, they say they have to share with their neighbors. They are not happy. It risks spreading the virus. I'm going to go to the 
ما باید بیام با تو بگم که شما نباید بیام الان این بچه دشوی داده با خود از صبح تا حالا نباید باش دشوی They tell me they're scared یه زفیه یه هست اینجا مردم نمیزنم اگر چرا آمده اینجا تردید شدم اینجا چاقو کشیدن سرم چجوری خرندنه ای چی خرندنه ای خدا باید At the medical center, people are turning up worried they may have coronavirus. This is Mrs. Rahimi. She says she has a heart condition and a sore throat. As I'm recording their complaints, I'm told to stop filming. I'm frustrated. Every time I come here, it's the same story. People telling me they're waiting for help and not getting it. The people are patient, they need a medical care and you do them. All the people have a problem, they don't care about the people. In a pandemic or in fact in any disease outbreak, we talk about these facilities as institutional amplifiers, essentially because people are in such close proximity. So we absolutely need trust if people are going to obey and comply with the advice that they're given. We're working with a number of international organizations to ensure that we provide appropriate health conditions for people affected and for people not affected in the camps. Our instruction is that people that are infected should be kept separate. We have dedicated containers for that. We have medical staff for that. Then I hear about an eight-year-old girl who is in hospital with COVID-19. She lives here with her mother in a place called the Tea House. <laughs> Mrs. Rahimi, who I first met outside the medical center, also lives here. The tea house is home to 23 families. I speak to Setayesh, the eight-year-old girl with COVID-19 from hospital. She has a heart condition, so she's vulnerable. My daughter first had heart palpitations. She was coughing and had a fever. Her mother describes repeated trips to the medical center before her daughter was tested. When the result of the test was positive, they said, don't worry, having coronavirus is not a big issue. She will be fine and it will pass. But her daughter became so ill, an ambulance was called to take her to hospital. I have a lot of wishes and dreams. I don't know. I just hope the virus leaves her alone. Two days later, people from the tea house are tested. Seven are positive, including Mrs. Rahimi. I try to keep my spirits high. Stress will put more pressure on me. She says problems with the quarantine of infected people started the tea house outbreak. When they brought some families with coronavirus to the container, we complained about sharing the water tap. But they said, don't worry. This has not been reported to us by the International Organization of Migration that manages the Malakasa camp. They haven't told us that there is such a problem. 
I'm very happy you are raising it. We will check. You have no message to the those who became sick. If there was a failure from the management of the camp in implementing the clear instructions they have had, this naturally is a very sad incident for which clearly we should be sorry for. The UN's International Organization for Migration says it provides site management support for the Greek government, who are by law responsible for Malakasa. It says it's followed the government's plans, including setting up a quarantined area, and has installed five showers and five taps. You know the people are so angry. All of the Greece are free to go. The only camp is here that we cannot go out. On May the 4th, Greece eased its lockdown, but the camps stay shut. Tensions are still running high. Staff have been barricaded into the medical center. I'm called on to translate again. Well, I hear you, my friend. Many problems. You're right. There are many problems. Okay, it's very clear. What we need now is that the people come out and then we can discuss more. Okay? Yeah. After a tense standoff, the medical team are released. I don't know what to say, but the people get so angry, that's not good. Today was not a good day. It is maybe would be the last time that I'm taking the camera and I'm talking to you guys. Early government action has helped keep infection rates low across Greece and in the camps too. According to official figures, in Malakaus and Ritsona there were more than 50 confirmed cases and none in Moria. This has been a difficult time, not just for the migrant population, it has been a difficult time for the entire country, it has been a difficult time for the entire European continent. Despite having 100,000 asylum applicants residing, in reception facilities. The total infection rate was 0.2%, which was not high. The total loss of life was zero. The Greek government says it's working to reduce overcrowding in Muria. My camp Malakasa and Ritsono came out of quarantine last week. My family and I hope to leave soon for a new life in Finland. One of the things that we have learned throughout history is that viruses do not respect borders, be they national borders or the borders of refugee camps or prisons. We cannot have a response that leaves some people behind because that will undermine the response in the whole world. The world is worried about the second wave of coronavirus infection. But action is needed now to improve conditions in Europe's migrant camps.